Hello Abnormal Family, hope everybody's doing good. It's now Monday, we made it through another weekend, and uh, just wanted to let you all know I had a really good uh, pre-record yesterday with uh, Scott and uh, Brooks joining me with one of our uh, subscribers, Ellen, and we'll be dropping that as a premiere next Saturday. Uh, we will all be in the chat, that way we can interact with you guys, we enjoy the premiere so much because... It gives us the opportunity to interact with our subscribers and since hello abnormal family hope everybody's doing good it's now monday we made it through another weekend and uh just wanted to let you all know i had a really good uh pre-record yesterday with uh scott and uh brooks joining me with one of our uh, subscribers ellen and we'll be dropping that as a premiere next Saturday. Uh, we will all be in the chat. That way we can interact with you guys. We enjoy the premiere so much because it gives us the opportunity to interact with our subscribers. And since we're all family, we do like to take the time to be able to interact with you guys. And not just have to focus completely on the live. So I hope you all enjoy the premieres. And uh, it will be Saturday at 7.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you're not able to make it, just catch the, uh, the replay. Again, I want to thank everybody for your donations and support to the channel at bringing my family back together against all the evil that came against us. Um, later on, there will be a lot more of this stuff released. As of right now, I cannot do that, but I appreciate all the questions, all the prayers, and the donations, and the gifts that we've received in the mail. You'll be able to find all that information in the description of this video. Let's get on with this encounter. I will be called M for this story. I was around 17 at the time of this story. I am now 43 and still remember the event like it was yesterday. The area I lived in at the time of this story didn't have any real apex predators other than the occasional coyote or the fox to speak of. The counties are named after Native American words and tribes. So maybe what I witnessed might be of Native American descent. I am not sure. But anyways, it was a normal early summer evening in the Midcoast, Maine. My best friend and neighbor, we'll call him D for anonymous sakes, and my cousin, again for anonymity, we will call him J, was at my house hanging out like every day. My dad had just come home from work for about two hours and had already gotten a buzz on. His drinking had become a problem since he and my mom had gotten a divorce. He come out back where DJ and I were hanging out and were target shooting. Hey boys, I hate to ask, but since I've been drinking already, I don't think I should drive. But I'm out of alcohol. Could you guys take me to the store in your wheels so that I can get me some more? I've already called Carol at the store, and she said she would discreetly sell it to you, knowing it's for me. Here's the money and extra for gas. In my area, and around this time in my life, it wasn't nearly as frowned upon for minors to get alcohol for their parents from stores that knew it was for their parents, like it is now. Small town, so everyone knew everyone. Never giving up the opportunity to ride the ATVs, I agreed to go, and so did Jay. I'll have to stay here because... It'll be dark by the time we head back, and I don't have a light or brakes on my wheeler. It's kind of junk right now. And we're waiting for the parts to come in. So he stayed home and hung out with my dad. And they prepped dinner, knowing in about an hour and a half they could start cooking. It takes about two hours to get to the store and back, going through the trails. So Dee and I set out for the store. We were going along at a good pace, but not going as fast as we normally do, so that we could talk and could vent about our home life. We just got to an area that has been prone to washing out with all the rain we had during the spring and even occasionally in the summer during heavy rainfall. So we slowed down for that area. At the top of the hill to pass splits and it was a small area with blueberries. And we usually stopped to grab a few hundred then look at the conditions of the washout before continuing. Upon reaching the area, though, Dee and I looked at each other quite confused. We saw a rather tall-looking white-tailed deer just staring at us from the bushes. 
We were used to seeing deer in the area, but none close to this height, and never with this huge 12-point or more sized rack for the antlers. But what was even more odd was that, even though it was so tall and antlered, it looked very thin and like it had mange or some other disease. Because it looked like, we could see its skull in spots where the skin was missing. And even though the skin it did have left was darker than normal, it had an odd glow like, I'm not sure, it was just a weird looking shine under the sun, maybe from just, maybe not even having no hair. And it smelled awful like a plastic outhouse that was full of the sun mixed with rotten meat and skunk spray. It was terrible. Oh, let's just keep going slowly and get away from that deer. The damn thing stinks so bad I want to hurl, I said to Dee. No complaints here, Dee agreed. So we kept driving slowly as not to spook the thing, but it got startled and slowly crept toward us as we rounded the corner and made our way down the hill. I stopped and looked back to make sure Dee made it down safely, which he did. We both looked up to the top of the hill where the deer was, and we see it, standing at the top of the hill on its hind legs with its front legs dangling like they were just going to fall off, but not moving at all. Normally a deer only stands on its hind legs when it's rearing its head to either headbutt another animal or to reach up to try to get food, but this one was standing perfectly still. That's weird, exclaimed Dee. Let's go. This thing is creeping me out. The rest of the ride to the store has been uneventful. But upon pulling into the parking lot from the trail, Dee had run over something and punctured his tire. Bad enough on the side that we couldn't fix it. In the store, we got what we had come for, and the clerk was kind enough to let me call home to let my dad know we had an issue. Jay picked up the phone. Hey, Jay, it's me. Dee blew a tire, and we ripped the sidewall pretty bad. Can you come and get him in the truck with Dad? I can ride back by myself. Jay had just got his driver's permit and had to have a licensed person with him. Yeah, we'll be there in a few, Jay said. While waiting for Dee's ride, we filled the ATVs up with gas and I helped push his out of the way and into the dirt area where we waited, just talking and laughing. About 15 minutes later, my cousin and dad pulled up into the load and we loaded Dee's wheeler into the back of the truck. Want to hop on the back and keep you company, asked Dee. Nah, I responded, I'll be fine. I'll be quicker without a passenger, especially if that nasty deer is still there when I get that far. Okay, ma'am, but take this. And what he handed me was an old fireplace poker he had strapped on the back of his ATV for defense. It's not much, but it's all I had left. Don't even know why I had it on my tools, but hey, it's pointy. My dad and cousin, now interested in the deer, asked about it. Dee can tell you about it on the ride home. I just want to get back before it gets dark. So they all set off down the road, and I, the trail, hoping that I didn't run into that deer again. Everything seemed to be good for a while, but then the woods seemed to get darker than normal and eerily quiet. Not even the sound of insects or frogs. I knew then that something was wrong. At the bottom of the hill was the deer from earlier. It was standing up again, but off to the left side of the trail in a small clearing. But this time, it made a sound. It sounded like I've never heard before. It screamed like a baby, but mixed with a goat and a fox. My head started pounding and my ears rang. I was instantly stunned and dizzy. Great, I thought to myself. This isn't a deer, but something else, and I'm probably going to die. The thing started coming toward me so slowly as if it were feeding off of my fear before it devoured me. Just then, I heard a loud crash next to me. Then some branches exploded past my head, and from the woods on the right something leapt out and landed between me and the deer thing. This creature was huge. It was also standing like a human. But this was no human. It looked, yep, just like a werewolf from the movies. Oh shit. I screamed, thinking there was no chance of survival. Now knowing either of these creatures could easily kill me and there wouldn't be anything left for my family to find. The werewolf turned a little toward me, but keeping an eye on the deer creature, it let out a low growl. And then it pointed at me, then pointed to the trail in the way I was going. I thought I heard it in a raspy deep voice say, Go. I just sat there, blank-faced, not knowing what to do. 
the deer thing now getting into a stance like you see in movies, like it was ready to fight. Still standing on its hind legs, but now they are apart, and its rear squatting lower, and its front legs now took on a more form of like arms. I noticed now that it had hands with long claws instead of hooves like a deer would. Again, the werewolf turned to me and repeated the command it had before, but this time it looked straight in my eyes. I expected the eyes to be red or yellow like in the normal stories you see and hear, but the eyes were bright blue. I didn't feel terrified of anymore. I now understood it was protecting me. At this moment, I remembered the poker Dia gave me. I grabbed it and I slowly held it upon my shoulders, threatening manner to the wolf, and I said, It's not much, but take it. I threw it down, and I took off on my quad, headed for home. I knew this thing would probably be fighting, and I did not want to be there to listen or to watch. As I was riding away, I could hear this terrible fight ensuing behind me. It was the worst thing I'd ever heard. It was almost like a baby was being beat the way it was screaming. It sounded just like a baby. But then there was the large growl on top of that. I rode as hard as I could that night. I told my dad what had happened. We sat in the house at night, stayed up that night, talking and wondering what it could have been. And then, scratching at the door, scratching at the window, heavy breathing, oh my God. It is found where we live. We turned out the lights, and we sat in the dark as quiet as we could. We could hear the thing walking around the house all night. And when the sun came up, everything quit as fast as it had started. And whenever my dad opened the door, the fire poker fell into the house. It had been leaned against the door. Whatever it was, it brought the fire poker back. To this day, we have never seen these creatures again. But sometimes, off in the woods, we still hear the scream of the baby and the howl of the wolf. So I'm guessing neither one got the best of either, that they're both out there. What do you think? I've never heard a story like that, uh, to be honest. Um, I don't know if it saved you or if they were already in a fight and you were just in the way. Um, but honestly, I don't have any answers for you on this one. Um... I think that, uh, read the comments and see what everybody else thinks about this, but I think you probably just showed up at the wrong time, or maybe the right time, because they were busy with each other, which allowed you to escape. Thank you for sending your encounter in. Everybody, thank you so much for listening, hitting that like button, helping make these videos trend. Y'all are awesome. And until next time, guys, keep your head on a swivel, and don't be something's dinner.